Okay, so uh, this is for my Kidwind uh, team. Um, some do's or don't and don'ts f uh, for uh, your presentation. Number one, here is a don't. You have a PowerPoint and you read it and you say something like, uh, we started with the research and uh, every time you go up a level, it changes and um, uh, roads cost twice as much, avoid water, uh, there's more complete info in the outputs. So don't just read it and whatever you do, don't put a lot of text. So this is fine, uh, bullet points, but so what you do is talk about the bullet point and you say stuff like, yeah, so the way it works is you go level by level and every time you go to a new level, a bunch of things change. Your costs uh, stay the same, but you get more money uh, and the, the wind is going to change, the houses are going to change, the maps are going to change, a lot of things are going to change. Um, one thing that stays the same is the, uh, the roads. Roads are expensive, usually don't want to uh, build a long road, you're better off building a long power line than a, a, a long road, and you don't want to go across water. Uh, it's so expensive, you're just never going to um, uh, be in a good place there. Uh, then, talk about your pictures. Um, so, hey, this is an example over here of, um, the, this is level two. So, uh, it costs 350000 to make a, a, a windmill. Um, you can see access roads are more than 27 or more than twice as much as a substation line. Bridges and underwater trenches really expensive, so um, that that can be a problem. Here is what you see in uh, in that research uh, location when uh, when you first start out, but later on in the outputs, you can open up this uh, PDF and it gives you more. Uh, like a complete set of restrictions what you're actually allowed to do so you talk about your pictures um, you may you use the bullet points to remind yourself what you want to talk about okay so don't don't just read your PowerPoint page talk about your pictures and uh, don't put a lot of text only put a few uh, words that are enough to remind you what to talk about um, Secondly, this is a big don't. Here's a dumb way to do a presentation of any kind as a team. Say, oh, hey, I've got this slide, you've got that slide, you've got that slide, you've got that slide, and one person talks for each slide. Bad way to do it. You can have one person be responsible for a slide, but you cannot just have one person talk for the slide. That is not a team-oriented uh, way of doing a presentation, and it looks bad. It doesn't come off right. Instead, one person talks about, yeah, um, so the bottom line with this whole power in the wind thing was that uh, the main thing that you can um, control is your how big the windmill is this wind swept uh the wind speed that's going to be based on where you're at um the density of the air like it changes when it's um hotter or a higher altitude those things you really can't change when you build your windmill this is it yeah what do you do with your your wingspan what do you do with the actual um blades fine i stop then the people other people in your group should be thinking and then you start jumping in with something like, yeah, so that's true. It is how big the thing is. But when you start d digging deeper into um, uh, building the windmill, you find out that like how you curve the blade and how you change the angle of attack and all these other things end up being really important. And then you stop. And then the, another person looks at it and goes, yeah, for example, like look at this um, – uh, this graph down here, it shows that really the pink line is showing us that this should keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger and giving up more and more output. But in fact, the blue line is how much you actually are getting out of the, uh, of the blade. So you want this blue line to go up with that pink line um, and it gets to be pretty darn complicated. So what am I saying? I'm saying 
One person can have responsibility for making the slide, but that sh you should never, never, never have just one person talk. At least one other person in the group should join in at the end and say, after that person talks about what it says, yeah, well, and this was in practice how this actually affected us. And somebody else should like see if there's anything else that occurs to them as they're talking. It doesn't even matter. Anything that is your reaction to what the slide is talking about is good. And the people who aren't the main person talking have a better chance to give more meaningful uh, pieces of information. So the team should talk. One person and then other people join in when that person finishes. Don't let that first person, uh, you know, end and be done. Um, thirdly, you can have one person uh, be uh, the person who is uh, controlling what is being displayed, moving the, um, the screen along. That person should not just then not talk at all. So I, I, let's say I'm the person who's moving the slides along. I might be the last person to talk, but I should probably say something uh, on at least some of the slides. Also, one thing in our presentation you're going to want to do is have a PowerPoint. I would strongly recommend. Make sure that you have pictures, maybe pictures of your best windmill. Um, somewhere in there, you know, something above and beyond what what I've put in there, although I think this is a pretty good start. Uh, but in addition to that, you are going to want to have multiple windows open so that sometimes you're on your PowerPoint, but the person who's running the presentation can go to uh, the white box simulator and go, yeah, see, and then after you make these windmills, you go to the competition here and then um, this is pretty neat. You actually uh, go to the qualifiers and I have my design and I'm going to say uh, make my design contender one and then go to the qualifiers. Maybe I want to go right up against the best one here and make that contender two and go click on start down here to actually have the competition. And, um, and this is what happened. And you might show your best one and how that's doing. You can see that I'm getting my butt kicked here. Uh, you may want to show uh, yourselves with your best windmill doing pretty good. You're not going to show the whole thing um, because I can then show, okay, so that one was our good one. And I'm, uh, you know, and maybe that's how you finish up. Uh, that, that would be your last slide, you know, how we did or something. Uh, Those kinds of things to finish up your presentation, you know. So this is what we really learned. Um, this was the most fun part about it. Um, this is how we made our best windmill, and this seemed to really work well. Um, these are the things we still don't know. And, uh, you know, if we do this next year, here are a few things that we're going to keep in mind uh, to try to get better. Okay, so there you go. Do's and don'ts. Don't, don't put a lot of text. Don't read do not read your um, uh, your PowerPoint. Uh, put a, put bullet points and then talk about the bullet points. Always use pictures and refer to the pictures. Talk about what they mean. The person who is controlling the PowerPoint when they say, "Okay, yeah, there, uh, see, this was the budget. You know, grab it, move it around, do something so that you can." Um, uh, so that the audience understands what you're talking about. Also, and, and then the other big don't is don't have one person do the entire slide. The entire team should try to jump in and say something on every slide. It may not happen every slide, but you should try to have every member jump in and say something about how this affected you in practice or just even a thought about it on every slide. You should be trying to do that. That way, at least it'll happen most of the time. It shouldn't be just one person, 
reading uh, the slide, and it shouldn't be one person um, who uh, does the entire thing.